Cisco Ice, Meraki MX with MR, guest self-registration. All right, so we already have a hotspot created. Okay, we'll go in and edit settings and we'll walk through it. All right, Mac-based access control. We're gonna use ICE for the splash page. We'll put our IP addresses for ICE. COA is enabled, airspace ACL name, uh, gonna be used in a later video. And we have accounting set up as well. Walled Garden, this is gonna be uh, IPs that are required for the splash page. I also included DNS here as well. And that's about it on the SSID side. So let's go ahead here and jump into ICE and we'll go to network devices and we wanna make sure that the MR is um, entered in here. And uh, so I've already done that. Again, we're just focused on radius uh, and we're using the default Cisco device profile, um, which uses COA 1700. Now we'll jump to portals. Again, these are very easy to clone, right? Um, you just come in and duplicate them um, as needed. Um, Cisco does a good job of creating a bunch of pre-canned ones. Now, once you um, decide on the profile, you come in and, and edit your settings. It gives you a nice workflow, so you have a good understanding of what's happening with the guest as, as they connect and self-registered in our case. We're gonna use the authentication method default that's already there, guest portal sequence. And then we created a, um, in an earlier video, I created a, um, uh, using a certain profile for 24 hours as an example, right? Login page, right? There's lots of stuff in here, right? Um, you, you can say registration form, you got username, first name, last name, email address. You can make them mandatory, right? Um, you can have location. You can have SMS set up here as well. Person being visited, the reason for, for the visit. Uh, include the acceptable use uh, policy on the page. Uh, make the user scroll through it as an example. And again, here's your self-registration success settings. So what you're gonna allow the user to see, whether they wanna print, email, SMS, um, the credentials, or sign in uh, right from that page. Again, once it's signed in, uh, maybe you only wanna show the AUP the first time only, or you might want it to recur uh, over a, you know seven days or something like that. And you can see BYOD uh, settings, um, you know, post login, authentication success settings, um, all kinds of uh, you know elements that you can customize and you can change the colors, the logos and everything else. I don't get into that, um, but um, I just want to make sure that um, you, you get an idea of some of the capabilities within um, self-registration. Now we've jumped into authorization profiles and um, here we've got one created and you can see the default here. This is key, central web auth, ACL, whatever. Again, it's not referenced by Meraki. Uh, ICE requires a name to be put in here. And then now you're gonna reference that portal that we created. Now, if you wanna create an airspace uh, ACL or a group policy within Meraki to be referenced, this is how you would do it here. I'm gonna do this in a later video. All right, so now let's jump to policy sets. Look at authentication. And the one we're focused on here is wireless MAB and that's gonna use internal endpoints. Not the highlighted 802.1X, the one above it. Um, and authorization policy, we're going to look for specifically um, here it is here, where we're looking for wireless map, but we're also looking for SSID that ends with hotspot self reg dash guest. We're gonna reference our authorization profile that we just created. And then for the authentication, so once you get past the self registration, you're gonna then hit the next, by using change of authorization, you're gonna hit that next policy. Again, very similar attributes, that guest flow is gonna kick in. So here we're gonna create an account.
We'll give it a username, first name, last name, email address, right? The things with the asterisks in it is mandatory or required. Put in a phone number here. Company name, the person's email that um, you're visiting, and then reason for the visit. And then you can see there's that acceptable use policy built into the self registration form. So remember, once you've authenticated, it's gonna it's gonna now do change of authorization. You're gonna hit that guest flow um, uh, policy that we reviewed just previously, where it's gonna look for that SSID. You got to be part of guest flow, um, and obviously have an account um, registered with ICE. And there we go. We're, we're logged in now. If we just go to Google, let's make sure we have some internet access here. Perfect. Okay. So, but I still don't believe it's, we hit the right policy. So I always like to come in and check and validate. Um, you can see here, um, it certainly sh looks like um, that uh, that worked. There's the username at Jack T, uh, user types guest user. So that looks pretty good. And then if we look in um, here, let's see this policy here there's all the details too so if you ever need to you know look up as an example the email address it's there you can do that in other ways as well but um, but that's it right pretty easy to get registered and on the network don't have to ask anybody you don't need to have a sponsorship uh, by members of the the company that you're visiting although you could do that in this case we didn't need it we're doing self-registration